several videos we're going to be assessing the types of wine. In order to do that we're going to be tasting some wine and we're going to be using the 5S system that I showed you in our how to taste wine video. If you'd like to review that video or if you haven't seen it and would like to view it please click on the link below. To get started I'd like to clarify three terms that I think are often confusing. They are varietal, type, and style. Varietal is the actual grape that's used to produce a wine. This is a Riesling wine, and the Riesling grape was used to produce that wine. With blends, you can have multiple varietals to produce the wine. The varietal or varietals is listed on the label on the bottom. Type. Type is very simple. White, rosé, red, sparkling, and then fortified and dessert wines. We're going to focus on the first three of these in the upcoming videos. Now, style. Style is the characteristics that the vintner wants the wine to have once it's in the bottle. Some examples. The vintner can modify to some degree the body of a wine from light to medium to full. The vintner can also modify the sweetness from sweet, semi-sweet, semi-dry, and dry. If you just combine body and sweetness, you can see all the different combinations or styles that a vendor can use. An additional one, that oaky aroma and flavor. If the vintner wants that as a characteristic of the wine, the vintner can ferment and or age the wine in oak. It all depends on the intensity that the vintner wants for that flavor. Now, in order to discuss the types of wine, I had to choose some wines for us to taste. I chose some wines that are produced by some very special grapes. Those grapes are the noble grapes. Well, what makes a noble grape so special? A noble grape has to meet certain criteria. Those criteria are the grape has to be internationally recognized. It has to be grown in most or all of the major wine producing areas of the world. It has to consistently create a high quality wine and it must express the terroir of where it's grown. What does terroir mean? That's a French term. And the French term means the environment in which the grape was grown. The environment includes the soil and the climate. Now, we're going to be focused on, focusing on the seven most globally accepted noble grapes. The noble grape list has grown all the way to 20, but these seven we're going to focus on are globally accepted by everyone. There are three white noble grapes and four red. Since we're talking about white wine, the white noble grapes are Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay. So why did I choose the noble grapes? It's because they exemplify and portray all the, or most of, the flavors, aromas, and styles of wines you're probably going to get the opportunity to taste. So let's talk a little bit about white wines in general. White wines are produced using grapes that are light green to golden brown in color. White wine is pale straw yellow to a deep golden yellow. An interesting note about white wine is that white wine gains color with age. If you have a pale yellow white wine, a young white wine, and you let it age and don't drink it for a long time, it will eventually turn that golden yellow. As it approaches maturity and becomes undrinkable, it will actually start to turn brown. Now, how do I serve white wine? White wine wants to be chilled, so you want to serve between 42 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're going to open a bottle of white wine and leave it out for others to share, you should put it in an ice bucket, and that ice bucket should have water and ice, not just ice. Water and ice keeps it much cooler. As a rule of thumb, white wines do not need to be decanted. The exception to that rule is a full-bodied oaky Chardonnay, which you can decant, but you do not, have, do not have to. You need to serve a white wine in a glass that has a narrow bowl and a U-shape. That shape will keep the wine cool, and it will push the aromas closer to my nose so that I can fully appreciate them. Now, a couple more notes before we get into tasting wine. An 
they are. When I taste or evaluate wine, I always have a wine tasting sheet available. That wine tasting sheet allows me to indicate the name of the wine, and then down the left-hand column in that tasting sheet are all the characteristics that line up with the steps of the 5S system. That way you won't forget not any of the characteristics, and on the left-hand side of that sheet, you can note all your thoughts and opinions as you taste and evaluate the wine. Lastly, we're going to be using a system, a, a strategy of tasting the wines called unblinded. Unblinded means that we know what the wine is. In this case, I know that's a Riesling wine. What we're going to be doing is tasting, evaluating the Riesling wine that's in front of us and comparing that to a typical Riesling wine. That will allow us to decide, is my Riesling wine a really, really good Riesling wine or a not so good Riesling wine or really just a typical Riesling wine? Well, now we're all ready to start tasting our wine. I'm going to be tasting and evaluating a Riesling produced in New York. First, let's talk about Riesling a little bit. The Riesling grape is a light green skin grape. Riesling is the only one of the seven noble grapes we're going to be discussing that is not native to France, it's native to Germany. Riesling grapes grow in Europe, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, and of course the United States. Outside of the United States, the highest rate of Rieslings come from France and Germany. And in France, a small region in France, in northwestern France, bordering Germany, called Alsace, makes some of the world's greatest dry Rieslings. In the United States, Riesling is grown in Washington, California, Pennsylvania, New York, and Michigan. The highest rate of Riesling from the United States come from Washington and New York. Now let's get to tasting and evaluating our wine. First, Let's look at the clarity or clearness of our wine. Well, my wine's very, very clear. Let's check brilliance, flatness or dullness. Again, my wine is very brilliant, so that's not a problem. Let's check the legs. Well, as far as the legs go, the legs on my wine are very slight. That may lead us to predict we may have a light body. Now let's talk about color. The color of my wine is a middle yellow. Now, we're getting ready for checking on those aromas and smelling our wine. Swirl your wine. I do this in two stages. The first sniff that I take, I'm looking for those initial aromas that I'm getting. On my second sniff, I'm looking for any additional aromas that I may have missed. Let's take that first sniff. Uh, definitely a petroleum aroma. Let's swirl again. Take that second sniff. I'm picking up hints, pretty good hints of apple and also a floral aroma. Now we're ready to taste our wine. Remember to take a large enough sip to coat all areas of mouth so you can appreciate all the different flavors and taste sensations. Let's take that sip. Well, that tart apple flavor jumps right out. And distinctive citrus flavors, lemons and limes. Now for body, light, medium, and full. Light being water or skim milk light, full being uh, whole milk and syrupy light. More round and creamy in your mouth, more weight. Well, my wine's definitely somewhere between light and medium, so I'm gonna indicate it as light. Let's talk about warmth or alcohol. My wine's definitely very warm for a Riesling. So I'm gonna mark it as high uh, in, in warmth, knowing that I'm probably gonna find out that it's high on the range of alcohol that Riesling attains. Now let's talk about acidity. No question about my wine. My wine is very high in acid. Acid being low, medium, and high, I'm going to indicate high for acidity. Now sweetness. Sweet, semi-sweet, semi-dry, and dry. Well, there's a little bit of sweetness to my wine, but it's not really much. But it's enough to take the edge off of that one, some of that acidity which makes your wine very nice. Those two things playing very well together. So I'm gonna call my wine semi-dry. Now as I drink the wine, and it goes down my throat, I focus on the aftertaste. Is it pleasant? Is it bitter? My wine is not bitter at all. Bitter comes from tannins. Tannin scale is low, medium, high. I'm going to indicate low for tannins for my wine. Balance. My wine isn't quite in balance but it's not really radically out of balance. It's just slightly out of balance. And again, I remind you 
I like how that little bit of sweetness and the acidity play together. So it's a very nice drinking wine. Now let's compare this wine to a typical Riesling. First off, clarity and brilliance has nothing to do with the grape. If you're drinking a naturally produced wine where they do no filtering, your wine may be hazy just naturally. If you're not drinking one of those wines and your wine is hazy, you may have a bad wine. Color. Riesling color ranges from a pale straw yellow to a deep canary yellow. So your Riesling wine should have some yellow color, alcohol or warmth. Typical range for Riesling is 9 to 12 percent. As it turns out, the wine I'm drinking is a 12 percent Riesling. That's why I was getting all that warmth when I was tasting my wine. Now, acidity. Rieslings are high in acid. If you did not rate and you're drinking a Riesling, if you did not rate it as high, I would tell you go back and do that assessment again. Focus on that tartness, that Granny Smith apple taste. That's the acidity. And acidity sometimes it is very difficult to pick up. Now, sweetness. Rieslings range from sweet all the way to dry. And in some cases, very sweet, as there are some dessert wines made with some very sweet Rieslings. So you should be somewhere in that range without a problem. Now, bitterness. Your wine should not be bitter. If you have a reason that is bitter, you have a bad wine. White wines do not get fermented with the skins and stems, which is where the bulk of tannins come from, which is where the bitterness taste comes from. So again, if you have a Riesling that has a lot of bitterness, you probably have a bad Riesling. Balance. I really see balance as a personal feeling about the wine, how it kind of work, all those attributes work together. My wine being slightly out of balance, it's still a very nice drinking wine, and this is probably wine I would buy again, knowing that the vendor's goal is to have that wine completely in balance. A couple last notes about Rieslings. Rieslings want to be served chilled, 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Rieslings do not need to be decanted. Rieslings want to be served in a glass with a narrow bowl and a U-shape. And a very interesting thing about Rieslings, especially those more full, syrupy, sweeter Rieslings, they can age for a very, very long time. They can rival the big red Bordeaux's in aging capability. Most of the more common Rieslings between the light to medium body ones will not last that long. Now that we've completed our assessment of Rieslings, I want to tell you about food pairings. If you have a dry Riesling, you want to pair it with fish or salty fried food. Semi-dry reasons like being paired with spicy Asian and Indian cuisine. And the sweeter Rieslings like being paired with dessert. They're like after dinner drinks and they're really great with desserts. And they're great with one of my most favorite desserts, lemon meringue pie. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about Rieslings and Prepare for our next video where we're going to be tasting the last of the two white noble grapes, Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. If you want to taste along with me, bring a glass of each of those with to the next video. I look forward to that next video and I hope you do too. And as always, raise a glass and have a drink.